countries like the US, Soviet Union, and China have already soft landed on the moon and conducted various experiments on the moon. How does India's Chandrayaan-3 mission stand out in this context? What are the characteristics of Chandrayaan-3? Let's have a look. Subscribe to the channel if you like themes on history, mystery, and science. August 23, 2023 at 6.04 p.m. It's marked as the golden moment of India's Chandrayaan-3 mission. Billions breathtakingly awaited Luna soft landing. With the success of this mission, India became the fourth country in the world to do so. Let's see what's soft landing. A soft landing is a controlled landing of a spacecraft on a celestial body without causing damage to the spacecraft. A soft landing on the moon is particularly a tricky task. If soft landing is possible, more expeditions can be carried out on the lunar surface without damaging the complex equipment inside the probe. On the other hand, when a spacecraft crash lands on its planet or lunar surface at high speed, we call it a hard landing. The 2008 Chandrayaan-1 mission had a hard landing. Such vehicles travel across the surface of the moon to crash the probe when it reaches lunar orbit, collect as much data as possible and send it back to Earth to carry out studies. Chandrayaan-1 mission in 2008 crashed the moon impact probe onto the surface of the moon. Then after 11 years, in 2019, the Chandrayaan-2 mission took place. The goal was to conduct experiments on a soft land on the surface of the moon, but it turned out to be a failure. Chandrayaan-2 consists of three main parts. An orbiter capable of orbiting the moon, a lantern named Vikram, and a rover named Pegyan. The three parts, orbiter, lantern, and rover are launched from the Earth with the help of a rocket. From there, they were gradually brought into the orbit of the Moon. After reaching the orbit of the Moon, the second part containing the lantern and the rover got detached from the orbiter. As the orbiter orbits the Moon, the ladder named Vikram makes a soft landing on the Moon's surface. Inside this lander is the rover named Pregyan is positioned. After the soft landing, the rover would come out of the Vikram lander and browse through the surface of the moon to collect data and pay for further experiments which was the objective of Chandrayaan-2. But even though everything went smoothly in this process due to technical glitches that occurred while performing the complicated process of soft landing, the lander Vikram lost communication with the Earth and failed to perform the soft landing process and crash landed. When the lander crashed on the surface of the moon, both the lander and the rover were destroyed. So the mission failed, but after reaching the lunar surface, the orbiter is still working in the orbit of the moon and transmitting many data to the Earth. The Chandrayaan-3 mission is intended to fill the gaps where the Chandrayaan-2 mission had lost its footing. Chandrayaan-3 mainly has the three parts. The first one is the propulsion module. The second and third segments have a lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyat, just like Chandrayaan-2. The main feature of this expedition is that it doesn't have an orbiter. This is because Chandrayaan-2's orbiter is still working well in the lunar orbit. The propulsion module took Vikram and Pragyan to an area approximately 100 km above the moon. The lander and rover got detached from the propulsion module and achieved a soft landing on the moon. It was launched from the Earth on July 23, since Chandrayaan-2, which costed about Rs. 6 10 crores, was a partial failure. It was the common goal of every Indian to make Chandrayaan-3 a success. Therefore, Chandrayaan-3 had many modifications compared to Chandrayaan-2. If the Chandrayaan-2 was a success-based design, ISRO has developed a failure-based design for Chandrayaan-3. Otherwise, Chandrayaan-3 has been designed by analyzing the real causes led to the failure of Chandrayaan-2 and setting up solutions for it. That's why it's considered as a failure-based design. A major reason for the failure of Chandrayaan-2 was that it had too little landing area. The probe was originally supposed to land in a small area measuring 500 square meters by 500 square meters. 
However, this area was considered to be too small as there was a high risk of the prop landing off targets. Therefore, the landing area was expanded to 4 square kilometers by 2.5 square kilometers. This larger area provides a much wider margin of error and ensures that the prop will be able to land safely even in the event of adverse conditions. ISO has conducted multiple dropping tests with the help of helicopters and cranes to study the various problems encountered during the landing of Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander. In Chandrayaan 2, the maximum speed the lander could attain during landing was 2 meters per second. However, in Chandrayaan 3, this was improved to 3 meters per second. As mentioned earlier, Chandrayaan 3 doesn't have an orbiter. This speed up space for extra fuel so that it can move on to an alternate landing site if required and this ensured more security for the expedition. In totality, it can be said that Chandrayaan 3 is a modified version of Chandrayaan 2. The reason why India is coming forward with such a mission is not just to achieve the status as a fourth country to have made a soft landing on the moon after the United States, the Soviet Union and China. While various soft landings have been done on the surface of the moon before, Chandrayaan 3's soft landing was a distinct one from all of the previous ones in several ways. Chandrayaan 3 has successfully landed on the moon's south pole. Even though countries including China and Israel have tried their luck to land props on the south pole of the moon, the Indian Space Research Organization was able to successfully navigate the spacecraft through the treacherous terrain and land it safely. The South Pole of the Moon is a region of extremes. It is the coldest, darkest and most rugged part of the Moon. This is because the Moon's axis has a tilt of only 1.5 degrees, which means that the South Pole never receives direct sunlight. As a result, the temperatures in the South Pole can drop as low as minus 230 degrees Celsius. The lack of sunlight also means that the South Pole is home to many permanently shadowed craters which are thought to contain water ice. The main reason why other countries have failed in this endeavor before is the challenge of successfully completing a soft landing in such a harsh location and the challenge of accurately operating the electronics inside a rover in such a cold sunless location. That is why India has emerged victorious and this can be addressed as a real breakthrough. The greatness of this achievement is not only in landing on the moon's polar site, but also in landing in a location that is most likely to have water. The polar regions of the moon are the most likely places to find water, so this mission is a significant step forward in the search for lunar water. If any material survives here, it must have been preserved frozen for billions of years. Scientists believe that studying this material could provide definite evidence about the origin of the solar system. It's hoped that the success of Chandrayaan 3 will lead to many invaluable contributions to the scientific world. The mission has a budget of rupees 615 crore, which is equivalent to about 75 million US dollars. It's said that the sci fi movie Interstellar, directed by Christopher Nolan, cost 165 million US dollars to make. So, this is a relatively low cost for a space mission. And it is a testament to the efficiency and ingenuity of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. With its growing capabilities and expertise, India is poised to do wonders in space technology in the years to come. The successful launch of Chandrayaan 3 is a testament to the country's growing prowess in the spring. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel and share with your friends. Thank you. Godspeed. Stay tuned.